What's up guys, Charles from Free Takes Dev. Welcome to a new video. And if you guys are actually following a lot of YouTube channels which cover cameras and camera rumors, there is no other camera which people are talking about right now more than the Canon EOS R5 and R6, especially the R5. And here in Singapore, Canon Singapore has just opened their pre order list for the Canon EOS R5 and I checked out the price body only will be selling for about 6,200 Singapore dollars extremely expensive camera but I guess looking at the specs 8k video 4k 120 frames per second and all that good stuff C log 10 bit internal and all that kinds of uh, cool mouth watering video specs that you see and I also watched Peter McKinnon's video on the Canon EOS R5 and the R6 and it looks fantastic. So back to today's topic, it's about vlogging cameras. So for some strange reason, a lot of camera companies have launched point and shoot selfie cameras. I don't know why for this specific moment, maybe there's a growing trend more than ever during this period for people doing vlogs and stuff. Like Sony, they actually released the Sony RV1 and Panasonic also launched a G100 vlogging camera. So today's topic will be about vlogging cameras and I do have a camera specifically for vlogging. It was designed for vlogging, which is the Fujifilm X-A7, which is a 2019 November release from Fujifilm. I've been using it for a few months right now. And finally, I did the video against the Canon 200D, which you're gonna see in a few moments. I think finally I managed to get the proper settings for autofocus and color and all that. So it looks really, really nice. Here is the Fujifilm X-A7 with the uh, kit lens looking uh, nice and shiny, I guess, uh, but it's all plasticky. And then you see how small this camera is, but you check out that LCD screen, how big it is, that is insane. So this camera was specifically designed for vloggers. It's so light. And then here is the Canon 200D, one of the most popular entry-level APS-C cameras from Canon. Look at the difference in size. Uh, both not weather sealed, both have articulating screens. And this lens that I'm using is not the kit lens. This is the 10 to 18 wide angle lens for vlogging. Uh, audio quality, stabilization, video quality. That's what we're gonna take a look in today's video. And uh, some things to take note of, although this is smaller than the Canon 200D, the battery life is better than the Canon 200D. This is much smaller, so I'm assuming it consumes a lot less uh, battery life. But battery itself, in terms of the size, this is a 1250 milliamp battery. And the Canon 200D is using a 1040 milliamp battery. So I do have a lot of these batteries. But yeah, surprisingly enough, Fujifilm X-A7 has better battery life. Can also shoot 4K video up to 30 frames per second, slightly cropped in, and a limited recording in time. Uh, you can check out the video right now, comparisons, and then we'll decide at the end of looking at the videos, which one I would prefer at the end of the day. So let's get straight to the video. Okay, so what's up guys, Charles from Free Tanks Dev. This is the Fujifilm X-A7. Whoa, let's stop right there. Check out the depth of feel on this kit lens, the 15 to 45 millimeters f3.5 to 5.6 kit lens gives this extremely nice blurry background, not overdone, just the right amount of bokeh. Look at that, absolutely brilliant. Pretty impressed with this Fujifilm X-A7. Versus the Canon 200D vlogging test. This is uh, a November 2019 release, an entry level APS-C. 24.2 megapixels can shoot 4k 30 frames per second well the xa7 is specifically a vlogging camera it's so small it's so light it's about 320 grams against the canon 200d the body alone is about 453 grams so it's a lot heavier more bulky uh, especially the lens that i'm using which i highly recommend on the canon 200d is the 10 to 18 millimeters uh, f4.5 to 5.6 lens that's the best lens and it's so cheap for vlogging on this Fujifilm X-A7 basically the kit lens is good enough this is the field of view 15 to 45 millimeters f3.5 to 5.6 uh, pancake lens 
and it has OIS coupled with the Fujifilm X-A7's EIS you're gonna get dual stabilization so that's really nice yeah so how does this look I am uh, shooting in a manual mode uh, 1080p 60 frames per second my shutter speed is about 2000 right now and automatic ISO using a gorilla pod and the road shotgun mic so basically that's my setup really easy nice setup how's the stabilization I've been walking for about a hundred meters and how's the audio quality as well because this XA7 uses, is using a 2.5 millimeter head jack instead of a 3.5 millimeter head jack which is they give you an adapter so that might affect the uh, audio quality when using a 2.5 adapter and Dawson just fell down <laughs> the sun is in front of me I'm going to the shade so how will it handle this is that anything good? How's the dynamic range? I am on uh, auto dynamic range as well. I'm gonna turn around with the sun behind me. How does it look? This is nice. Turn around and I gotta put the camera upwards again with the sun above me. Can you see my face? I don't, so it should be quite black. Yep, so how does this look? The stabilization, like I said, dual stabilization, EIS plus the OIS. So I'm perspiring like crazy, walking around this park, just testing this field of view, the stabilization and the audio as well. So we're gonna change over to the Canon 200D right now and see how it looks like. Is it better than this Fujifilm X-A7? All right, so right now we are on the Canon 200D and I'm absolutely loving this field of view. It is a, on a 10 millimeter lens, the 10 to 18. Remember, if you are planning to get this camera or any uh, basically Canon DSLR, APS-C DSLR, remember to get this lens the 10 to 18 f 4.5 to 5.6 is one of the nicest cheapest best looking lenses in my opinion for its price don't get the 18 millimeters uh, 18 to 55 kit lens that really sucks the autofocus is really noisy you can hear it in the video so don't get that 18 to 55 kit lens if you do have the choice get this 10 to 18 uh, if you want to do vlogging and stuff it's the really really nice uh, feel of view nice colors everything so looking great on this Canon 200D so how does this look walking around the park same I'm using the gorilla pod and I'm using a shotgun mic shooting at 1080p 60 frames per second testing out the dynamic range uh, the sun's in front of me right now how does this look I'm gonna turn around back facing the sun How's the dynamic range on that? I'm gonna go into the shadows. Is that good? Go back to the sun. Go into the shadows. Looks pretty good. I'm pretty impressed by the Canon 200D. Uh, great dual pixel autofocus. 1080p60 for its price uh, compared to the Fujifilm X-A7 which is about 800 sing. This is a lot heavier if you were to ask me that Fujifilm X-A7 is only like 320 grams with a really large LCD screen on the back. There's no EVF on the Fujifilm X-A7 just to take note so for, for photographers no point in getting the uh, Fujifilm X-A7 if you're gonna use the EVF because it doesn't have one. Stabilization Canon 200D is using EIS as well and also this lens the 10 to 18 f 4.5-5.6 has uh, image stabilization I'm using the uh, neutral color density picture profile as well shooting in manual mode at f 4.5 shutter speed at 4000 ISO automatic yeah, so this is what it looks like hope it's good and the Fuji's lenses are a lot more expensive than the Canon's EFS lenses so another thing to take note of so we're just doing a side-by-side -side comparison I'm in automatic mode on both cameras and so how does it look both have articulating screens which the Fujifilm X-A7 has a much much larger screen it's the largest LCD screen on any camera that I've ever owned 
and a Canon 200D is a pretty good screen as well not as big but it is pretty nice and visible so I'm just doing the vlogging test right now all right so basically that was it right now we're gonna come to my conclusion basically uh, overall I think the Fujifilm had the better uh, dual stabilization that OIS and that EIS coupled together look less uh, bumpy than the Canon 200D so Fujifilm X-A7 takes the cake for the stabilization test in terms of colors I think I really like that Fujifilm X-A7 colors I always prefer the Canon colors because I always believe that the Canons have the best color science out of the camera but if I were to compare this X-A7 against the 200D I would tend to lean towards the X-A7's colors especially with that extremely nice uh, depth of feel that bulky effect that's going on in the background and then last of all is the audio quality I think pretty similar although the Fujifilm X-A7 is using that 2.5 millimeter adapter didn't really affect uh, the audio quality on the Rode video microphone I think pretty much it sounded the same so basically guys that was it overall Fujifilm X-A7 to me worth the money uh, pretty cheap vlogging camera Nice LCD screen, extremely light, better battery life, better stabilization than the Canon 200D and colors look better. Uh, you can also do your own color grading, you can desaturate the colors and all that shooting in the uh, flat picture profile. Same as the 200D, you do it manually. So yeah, overall I think for me the Fujifilm X-A7 surprisingly did a really good job shooting at 1080p 60 frames per second. Alright, so that's all guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button, the like button and the notifications button and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.